Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you that we can remember you this morning, Lord, and everything that you've done, what you're doing in our hearts and lives right now. Father, we are in anticipation of what you're going to be doing in the future. Father, we thank you that our hearts are open for the input of the Spirit of God. Thank you for impartation in our hearts and in our lives. Father, this morning, we honor you and respect you as Father God. Jesus, we honor you and respect you as the Son of God. Holy Spirit, this morning, we honor you and respect you as the Comforter and the Counselor of Heaven. It concerns me in the church when I sometimes hear how God, Jesus, and I'm talking about God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the way that they are addressed. Let us never forget we are dealing with a holy God. Let us never forget that we are dealing with a God of fire. Let us never forget that we are dealing with a God who by one word from His mouth can change the entire universe in a second of time. All He has to do is just move on purpose for something to happen and the universe will shake. Almost forget nooit dat onze vrees, de heilige vrees van God met hen. It disturbs me when I hear people talking about the man upstairs. The man upstairs. I want to say something. A person who talks like that had not had an experience with him. They don't know who he is. The demons recognized him and fell before him in stark terror and fear. So, Father, this morning, as a church, as a people of God, we want to say, We honor you. Yes. Our highest, almighty Father God, sovereign, supreme. We honor you. We thank you for the privilege we have of serving you. Thank you that as sons and daughters this morning, our hearts are lifted to you in adoration and thanksgiving for the change you've brought, the transformation you've brought in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, Lord bless you. Before I start ministering, before we start um, doing our message, is there anyone here this morning who has a testimony that you want to just give praise to the Lord for something He's done in your life and you want to honor Him today for who He is? Anyone who has a testimony? Um, we just want to thank the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, praise the Lord for the He went to the ENT. Anyway, I can say. Yeah. Um, the holes in his ears, the one hole in his one is completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. And the other one is very small, but we speak healing in the name of Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. you right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Testimony? Yeah. The vision I saw last week. Yes, 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 yes. It's very important that you share that. Um, share with them what you saw last week. Last week while we were praising and worshiping, um, I just had this vision that it put into my into my soul. It was a vision of us all standing so, around. Just put your microphone. Yeah. Well, I just I just had this vision of us all standing at the bottom <laughs> of Mount Everest, and it was full of snow. And we all looked up, and at the top there was this most amazing sun and light. And the snow was just melting. And for me, it, just, it was just an amazing message that God is just melting away. Every problem that we've had, we have. Every challenge that we have. Every financial 
difficulty you were experiencing or relationship experience or health experience. It was just the most amazing vision and I just know and trust that he is in control of our lives and our world. Amen. 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 I and my son Christopher was in motorbike accident. Uh, we were at EWG that night. We were driving to Brenda's work to go and pick up a file or something. And we got a phone call saying Christopher is, was in an accident and he couldn't move. You know, he was like paralyzed. So obviously we went to her work, we were right there at the gate. We grabbed the file and we went through to Wilhelm Hospital. When we got there, Christopher, well, he was still lying in the bed with a neck brace and all that nonsense. And he's gone for a um, full body scan. And the results came back and uh, the doctor said there's absolutely nothing wrong with him. He T-boned a car and the only thing that was wrong with him, he had a little cut on his hand because he lost his, his glove. And it is only by the grace of God that Christopher is with us today. Amen. 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 Testing the time. Anyone else that's got a destiny that you want to testify of what the Lord has done, but the Yerah has done it in your life. Anyone else? Okay. Praise be to the Lord. Man, Fred, good to meet you to see you. Great to see you, Fred. And other visitors, by welcome, by welcome, by welcome, welcome. Anyone else? Annabelle, welcome. <laughs> Bless you. It's good to see you this morning with us. This is going to be, this is going to be awesome. I mean, I've been looking forward to this one for some time. And like I said to you, we kept this for, we kept the best for last. And I want you to go to the first book of Corinthians and the 12th chapter. Now, what we're going to do today is how many of you are ready? And I asked you this a while ago. How many of you are ready for the deeper things, the, deep, the deeper the matter? Right. Yeah. What's up? Uh, there we go, Josh. Can I just hear? How many of you are ready for the deeper things? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm in the right place this morning. I took the right turn from Robbie Street. I know that I'm in the right place because we're going to be talking about you this morning, specifically you, every single one of you seated with your behind in the seat today. This message is for you and it's about you. Now, when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, there has obviously throughout the years been some confusion and unfortunately I see there is still confusion, not because I have a handle on it, I don't, I'm still learning, even now as I was preparing this, I, I still see things and I thank the Lord that He opens things to us and to our understanding, but we've been saying throughout the series, there's a couple of words we've been saying, one, two, three, four words, God is preparing you. And there are those, I said already, and we said it at the beginning as we started the series on the Holy Spirit. <coughs> there are some of you that's going to grab a hold of this. And your lives are never going to be the same again. Then there are others that will say, well, that's more for really the pastors and those who are called to the ministry. It's not really for me. And it will pass you by. I want to say that, that your desire will be granted from your own heart. It will pass you by. And then those who say, I want to make this my own, whether I'm in ministry or not, or whether I'm on my way to ministry, I'm going to make it my own. So I want you to work with me this morning, and I want you to work with me strong through the Scriptures, because I want the Bible to speak for itself today. Now, I'm going to... Are you going to listen fast today? Are you going to listen well? Because I want to mention it, and I want to move. I want to mention it, and I want to move. And at the end, I'm going to tie it all together. So right at the end of 1 Corinthians 12, it says from verse 24, Now our presentable parts have now need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part that which lacks it, that there should be no dis discord or schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. My desire in the body of Christ is that we care for one another deeply. And that's what Paul is saying. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with him or with her. Yes. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ. Say that with me. We are the body of Christ. And members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, 
third teaches after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, I'm asking the question this morning, are all apostles? And the, question, and the answer is no. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healings? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. And do all interpret? No. Not everybody does. But earnestly desire, and this is your verse for today, earnestly desire the greater gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. What Paul the Apostle is saying to the Corinthian church, and I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit led Paul to do this, especially for the church of, at Corinth. The church at Corinth was a church that came out of the world, but the world was still in them. That's why they had clear instructions of the order of how things are supposed to work. Now, here's the thing. How many of you like hamburgers? Can I just see your hands? All right. Half the church. The rest of us are health freaks. All right. <laughs> we like our hamburgers, don't we? And I know you're going to say, well, do you like, I prefer the McDonald's or the Steers or the Spur, whichever one you like. But here's the thing. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit is very accurate? Amen. He doesn't kind of miss it. Even slightly. He's extremely accurate. The way that He put together for us what we have today as the Holy Scriptures was divinely designed that it is fit together in the way that it is. Let me explain, and I'm, I'm going to come back to the hamburger. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is the bun at the bottom. All right. Now, then you've got all the nice goodies and the relish and all of that uh, on, on that bottom bun. Then you have the patty. Now, for us as men, that's the most important part of it. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. And I know the ladies are also saying that, but the patty is really very important. And I like the 100% pure beef patty. The chicken does well on its own, and it's also fine. Then you get these deboned rib burgers, and they are good too. And then you have the bun on the top that's got the sesame seeds on. So that's basically the composure of the hamburger. And you're thinking, you're in chef school this morning. <laughs> Here is the thing. The bottom bun is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The patty is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And the top bun is 1 Corinthians chapter 14. What the Holy Spirit did through the Apostle Paul is he wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as the foundation of all of the gifts, the spiritual gifts. The patty is in the middle. What is 1 Corinthians chapter 13 all about? Come on. It's about love. Mike, it's about love, brother. And what is 1 Corinthians 14 about? It is about the expression or the operation, Julita, of all the gifts. Do you see it? There's your burger. You've got 1 Corinthians 12, the foundation of the gifts, the explanation of what they are. The patty in the middle is the love. And the top is the bun. Without the patty, the burger ain't no good. So you have the patty that glues the top and the bottom together. The gifts are always supposed to operate in love. It must operate in love. That is why the Holy Spirit will stir it on the inside of you. Let me just grab a hold of this. The Holy Spirit will stir it on the inside of you. In order for you to first operate in love before He operates the gifts through you. We proved that last week. Those of you who were here last week, we dealt with Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. And we spoke about the fruit of the Spirit. We spoke about love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. And the Bible says against such there is no law. Why? Because it's all love. So when you have the fruit of the Spirit being developed in your heart and in your life, the Holy Spirit is now ready to start imparting to you the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. Alright, you said you are going to listen finally this morning. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We are now going to go to the portion 
where Paul starts talking about the gifts. How many of you have been to another country and you never spoke the language? Can I just see the hands? All right, may I ask, uh, has it been like to Paris? I've been to Paris, but it's just down the road here. <laughs> I'd like to go to the other one with a big tower, you know, the steel structure. I'd like to go to that one. But can I just ask the countries that you went to that you didn't speak the language, will you just shout it out, please? Japanese. Sorry? Japan. Japan. That's a heavy one. Paris. Paris. Portugal. 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 Austria. Mm. Colin, you've been to a few. Germany. China. China. Yeah. Come on, Colin, you've been to a few. What? What? Which other ones? You've been to all Saudi. I mean, you've been up Europe. there. Yeah, UAE. Colin, I just want to ask, would it have been a convenience if you had spoken all those languages? <laughs> I've just been to Israel and to Kenya and to, uh, I've been to Uganda um, and I've been to Zambia. Now, I've picked up a few of the words when I was there, but I want to say that when you speak the language of the country that you are visiting, it is a huge advantage. I have heard this said, I'm not sure if it's true, you can help me, but they said when you are in Paris and you don't speak the language, it's difficult to get by because apparently, oh, I see they're nearly knocking their heads against their chest the way that they are agreed, that the French are not very helpful when it comes to helping you in Afrikaans. <laughs> English, obviously, but they, they're not very helpful when you don't speak the language. Here is the thing. The Spirit has a language. You say, yeah, I know, I said, it's tongues. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Us as the people of God, the born again people of God who had an experience with, with Christ, sorry. Ah. Oh, that's just a little sponge, it's fine. I wonder if I should use the hand mic because this is. Because when I've got a jacket on, otherwise, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Sorry about this. I'm going to address. <laughs> This is gonna make it this is gonna make it easier. Because it's dejected, it's always all there. Okay, Joe, can I have it? Back with you. Thanks, my brother. Bless you. Oh Joe, you know you are such a help. Thank you. Alright, now we'll put it in the pocket and we'll carry on preaching. Okay, where was I? The spirit has a language. The language of the Holy Spirit, the language that he speaks. Is through the gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now what I want to show you 1 Corinthians 12, when I can find my glasses now, where are they? Tinas? Pastor John? On the stand? On the stand? Not inside. You saw my glasses without your glasses. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 12. That's the language of the Spirit. Now watch, Paul the Apostle is speaking to the Corinthian church. Verse 4. He says, There are diversities of gifts, but it's the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but it's the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the prophet. Hold up. Wait, wait a minute. It says here, verse 7. But the manifestation is given just to the pastors. The manifestation of the Spirit is given only to the apostles. What does the Bible say? The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each and every one for the profit of everybody. Here's the thing, whatever the Spirit endows you with, whatever He gives you, is not for you. It's for the profit of everybody. Amen. So whatever you get by the Spirit of God is for the profit of the body of Christ. Watch. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. 
But one and the same Spirit works all of these things. Here's the thing. The Holy Spirit, when He endows with His gifts, when He downloads His gifts to His people, it is for the profit of the entire body of Christ. The first portion that He mentions in verse number 7, in, excuse me, in verse number, number 4, it says there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same Spirit. There it's talking about from verse 7 down to verse 12. It's talking about these gifts of the Spirit that we're going to look at just now. The nine gifts. Then it says there are differences of ministries, but it's the same Lord. As I said, you've got to listen fast today. That's Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 onwards, where it talks about that He gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come into the unity of the faith. 